Hi, I'm Annie, and I love stories. I'm a little late, but I watched the this year's Academy Awards, and I saw all the Best Picture nominees, and these are just my personal opinions. So, I'm going to start off with the biggest Academy snuff, Killers of the Flower Moon. I think this is like even a bigger snuff than the Barbie. So the Killers of the Flower Moon is my second favorite out of all the Best Picture nominees. By the way, that's a, that's a very pretty movie title, don't you think? Killers of the Flower Moon. It takes place in 1920 and it's about the Osage, the Native American, the Osage tribe. They discover oil in their land, on their land and they become insanely rich. But with all that money, like all these like par white man parasites, they come into their lives to extort as much money from them as possible. They will like try to marry them, marry their money. As the title suggests, it's like the killings of the Osage tribe. And this is like, this is a true story. Three main characters, I would say. Uh, the Robert De Neri, he plays, uh, William King Hale. He is, the man who puts on a friendly face to the Osage people. He would like even learn the Osage language. Behind the back, he's been like orchestrating all these murders. Which is interesting because like recently I have been betrayed by a person named William, who I thought was my closest friend. Anyways, and Leonardo DiCaprio, he plays Ernest. He marries the, the rich Osage woman, um, Molly, which is played by Lily Gladstone. And I'm not, I'm not really big into like historic dramas. I, I very much prefer like, uh, like a sci-fi or a fantasy, but this movie is it, pretty long, but I was like, very engaged to it. I was re I was really rooting for the the relationship Ernest and Molly. I was like, no, no, Ernest, no, don't don't turn to the dark side. And like for the entire movie, I was like rooting for the Ernest and Lily, whilst while you know the William was like trying to persuade Ernest to poison his wife. I don't know what you said, but it must have been Indian for handsome devil. <laughs> Robert De Niro, he is best when he's like playing this like evil mobster. I really wish the movie would try to like make it less of a mobster-ish flick, like mobster gangster-ish, like I wish the movie had like explored the duality of the William King Hale because like this OC tribe has been literally backstabbed. Like they were literally killed by the person that they trusted. So I, I wish the movie would like explore the duality of like this cluster B personality type is I wish the Leonardo DiCaprio was younger. I mean, like, this guy is like, this guy is like over 40. It's basically like a gold digging whore trying to marry this rich woman. And like, the real life Ernest was actually seven years younger than Molly, but in the movie, um, Leonardo DiCaprio is actually seven years older than Molly. Which doesn't make sense because he's the he's the rich digging whore here, so he should be the younger. So that kind of like threw me back. I still enjoyed the scene where DiCaprio gets spanked in the ass. That was that was very hot. I wish I had more of those. Yes. Four out of five. Okay, it's Barbie. This was like the biggest. It is probably, it's probably the most profitable out of these 10. I, I really enjoyed it. I went there with my girlfriend. It's very culturally significant, especially Margot Robbie. She's like, 
she's she's like the literal human Barbie, and like there's a and it it has it has like it has its creative moments here and there, and it's very it's like it's like very stylish. It's it's very cool, but I didn't like how it uses. I mean, it's a propag. It's it's kind of like a feminist propaganda movie, so it needs to like fabricate the reality. Like she, like all the men she meets in real life are like very like very shitty men. The main character, she she gives out a speech, and people are like, "Oh wow, I am suddenly woke." You know that's that's not how it usually goes in real life. You know, you could like do your very your like best hurt fit speech, but people aren't going to change just because they're going to like blame. They're going to justify. But <clears throat> it was it was a very fun movie. I I saw. I think they should have like at least one like the best production or the best costume. Yes. Three and a half star out of five for Barbie. Poor things is not for everyone. It's not for the faint of heart. It is very weird, wild, inappropriate, but fun, funny, kind of like me. As a woman with a spectrum on ADHD and autism, I could I I totally related myself to Bella. <laughs> She's she's very honest, very straightforward, very blunt, and it gets in. So she gets into a very a socially awkward situation, which I have a lot. I'm sorry for all the people I've offended. Excuse my autism. It is undoubtedly the most creative film out of all this. Like the world building that this movie takes from, like the soundtrack, from the cinematography, from. And the costumes, Barbie is a feminist film written by female, and Poor Things is a feminist film with feminist message, but it's like written heavily by men, and they they both kind of shows they're both kind of like cringy in their own way. And it it has a lot a lot of sex scenes. Of course, none of them is as hot as the cafeteria getting spanked. So is the film going to promote sex positivity? And I'm kind of curious about the ending because she was Bella's girlfriend, and now Bella is married. So like, did did they break up? But they're living together. So are they now in a poly relationship? Like, is is he okay with that? So so when Bella dropped him and brought his body to the lab, I said, okay. So now Bella is going to save Godwin by replacing his brain. So I thought, you know, they're good. They're going to get to live forever, but I guess not. And I really liked that you know when the poor sing whenever they won Academy the the soundtrack for the ending played and um, when you cannot define the genre of this, because that means it's very new. That means it's very creative. Poor things. Four and a half star out of five. And、um, next movie is American Fiction. Probably not a lot of people have watched it, but I recommend at least see the trailer. All the best jokes are in the trailer. The star of the movie is of course Jeffrey White, who is the main character. And it's like、um, it's like a satire, like kind of a criticism, making fun of social justice warriors and how it flattens African American to and how they're like using them for their absolution. 
And easily Jeffrey Wright, he is the star of this movie. It's like he's the best part of this movie. He plays this like very warm, empathetic, emotionally intelligent, sophisticated professor. And he has this moment where he switches into like his like different uh, ghetto persona. That part was very funny. And like a, a lot of reviews says that this movie brings like humanity to the flattened uh, stereotype, which I disagree. Early on to the film, I thought, you know, uh, his sister was going to be a, a large part of this film because she was in the screen time a lot. And like, I'm, I'm not exaggerating, this character, she, she suddenly like grabs her chest like, Ugh! and then the next scene, she's dead and i was like what they start reading her obituary and it's like filled with jokes which is not that funny and i was like okay so they just kill his little sister to just read this very unfunny obituary so three out of five and the next film I'm going to... Oh, The Holdovers. I mean, the, the Holdovers was also very wholesome, but it was, like, just very too easy going, too wholesome. I thought it was going to, like, be The Breakfast Club, but it didn't. I, I, I wish... I, 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 wish it, I, I wish it kind of did. I mean, it, it just feels safe, it feels good, and it feels familiar. Two and a half star out of five. Anatomy of Fall, it, I think this is like the only non-English. It's, it's like not entire non-English, but like more than half of it is like French. And it's, it's like this a uh, crime, courtroom, family drama. And I, I like how uh, the court system in France is very, like, very democratic, very solid, very realistic, very well done. And I will, I especially want to praise the, the child actor and, of course, the dog. Of course, the dog. Good boy. But yeah, the child actor, he, he did an amazing job. And since Milo is so good, I wish, you know, the film explored more on Daniel's point of view. I mean, the film, like, explored, they approach this in, like, you know, very multi-angle-ish way. But I wish it were more focused on the mother and the son dynamic. The psychology of Daniel, they already have, like, a terrific child actor. I have no idea why he wasn't nominated. But three and a half out of five. Maestro, it's supposed to be a film about a Leonard Bernstein, who is a legendary composer, but the film feels more like it's about Bradley Cooper. Leonard's like most iconic song, like, I like to be in America, okay by me in America. The film doesn't like feature any of his like legendary songs. And there, and like Bradley Cooper, he it's kind of obvious that he's like uh, faking faking his voice. I think there's there was this one scene he kind of like breaks the character. And, uh, I, no, I'm not. Yeah, nothing to do. No, I have I have an I have an interest in, in spending time with him too. I'm not I'm not trying to shove it off that I brought him in for her. The best part of this movie is of course Carrie. Two out of five, and. Zone of Interest. Okay, Zone of Interest. This was a very interesting movie. They, this movie was actually filmed right beside the Auschwitz. And I, I, I went, I, I remember I went there when I was like 12, 13. I remember the hallway of like all the shoes. It, for, for people who doesn't have time for this, like at least watch the trailer. I think trailer does a good job of catching the vibe of this movie and this this movie kind of remind me of Parasite the sky is blue the grass is green everything is so pretty but like it feels incredibly incredibly uneasy there's something very sinister going on behind the back 
zone of interest. I would give it 3 out of 5. And what else? Past lives. This was an interesting film because I'm Korean. And the movie starts out with like these people talking about the main characters and they're these strangers are like, oh, why are they here at 4 a.m.? And the, like the way she like stares at the camera kind of felt pretentious. After like watching the the great performers from Milo, like the child actors in this movie is very it's very lacking. I mean I understand they're children, but still like after seeing the Milo's performance, they definitely like threw me back. But it it's a very I would say, you know, it, it's a it's a poignant film and I like how they handle this situation like a grown up like a em grown up with empathy. They're very mature how they like handle this situation. And this is my my thought on ending. And when when you know when when he was about to like leave to Korea, I think like there are moments where they stare at each other and I and I think she was in a position where, you know, if he tried to like kiss her, she wouldn't hesitate and i think that's why she collapsed in in his arm crying and saying sorry i mean like it did not happen it did not happen but like at the moment her her heart was like displaced and he he understands it he also understands it it was yeah it was it was po very poignant very mature film it does get boring at some time. 3 out of 5 for past life. And Oppenheimer, which won the best picture. It was very boring. 3 out of 5. It should not have been 3 hours. Okay, but like for real, Oppenheimer. Um, I, I watched this in like the IMAX theater. And we, we, I, we were like very hyped. Going into this movie, I mean, it's a Christopher Nolan movie and the poster has like explosions all over it. The scene where it is like worthy of IMAX, I mean, it's, it's a great scene where, where there's like explosion, but that lasts like one minute. It makes sense, like it's historically accurate. After, you know, there was an explosion, it took about like 40 seconds for the sound to arrive. Thunder comes after the lightning because light travels much faster than the sound. And I get that it's a very historically, historically, politically, scientifically, very significant movie. It, it was like the golden age of physics, you know, physics kind of like died down in recent years, which is heartbreaking because I used to study physics in high school. But I have ADHD and like my ADHD was not having a field day with this movie. I was like, oh my God, this movie. And it's like, it's so melodramatic and like the way the the character talks like i i i had this issue with like other nolan's other movies they talk like they were written by chat gpt and like the, the sex scene was like so robotic so awkward so nolan you just needed to get laid it took my analyst two years and i don't think they ever put it that succinctly is it really worth it to act that good when you're like uh, playing a very robotic character? So the Strauss betrayed Oppenheimer because of his very fragile self-esteem. I mean like in real life there's like a classism, racism. They were just having an ex existential crisis moment. Strauss saw, you know, they were talking shit about them. Uh, they were talking shit about him because of his fragile self-esteem, which might have stemmed from MPS, the micropenis syndrome. So yes, this whole movie, this shit show stemmed from Strauss's micropenis. 
Nolan made much greater movies like Interstellar, Inception, Memento, The Prestige, and this is the movie that gives him the best director and the best picture. I mean, it's, it's, it's the Academy, you know, they care more about like the message, the significance, so. I, I do not agree with Robert Downey Jr. winning instead of Mark Ruffalo. Even though he was playing a, a patriarchal man with a very like flattened point of view, he brought like so much flair. He was like the perfect villain in this movie. He brought so much like flair and life into the movie. Whereas like Robert Downey Jr., okay, he, his acting is good. It's very believable, but it's a Nolan film, you know? It's like so... It's kind of pointless to be a good actor in Nolan film because like the characters are so it's so Nolan <laughs> it's so like AI-ish characters. Nolan's movies like they the characters were never the strong suit of Nolan movies. Like, it was really the the imaginative mind. I think I triggered a lot of Nolan fanboys. Cut! I wasn't that upset at Al Pacino's anticlimactic announcement. And it's kind of ironic how last year winner Everything Ever All at Once, I, I, I would rate it almost like a 5 out of 5, it's, it's my favorite. It's kind of ironic how the, um, last year's winner is very ADHD friendly, but this year is like very anti-ADHD. And I, I really I really like the the Ryan Gosling's pink jacket. I, I wish I could I wish I had one of those. And and the Arnold the Batman moment that was very cute. And John Cena. John Cena is very cute. He have a nice body. So that was my review for this year's Oscars and this year's Oscars Fast Picture nominees. You know, if you have anything to comment, put it down. And also, what was your what was your favorite this year? And oh, oh, oh and also like the boy and the heron. I, I, I was so happy that the boy and the heron won because uh, Spirited Away is my favorite Ghibli movie, and the boy and the heron was like very reminiscing of the Spirited Away moments. I hold on. Like I, I love Spirited Away so much. I even have I even have this art book and I made this I actually made this this little guy. <laughs> yeah, so let me know, you know, if you have anything to say. Okay. Thanks for thanks for I don't I don't know how long this is going to be under if I edit this, but it's going to be quite long I guess. So thanks for thanks for um listening to me. For like, I don't know, 20-30 minutes. Okay, bye.